special I/O modules. So so far we talk about the uh, uh, discrete and analog I/O modules. Now we want to move on to special type of I/O modules. High-speed counter modules are used to count pulses from sensors, encoders, and switches that operate at very high speed. So here we have a motor, and um, uh, the motor have a counter. That counter, usually high-speed counter, um, basically is a position sensor that sends the position of the motor and send it to the PLC. So these type of modules have the electronic needed to count independently of the processor. Why? Because we have huge amount of input coming. We want to lift the burden from our processor and leave it to the module. A typical count rate available is 0 to 100 kilohertz, which means the module would be able to count 100,000 pulses per second. Okay, so these are the pulses coming from these uh, encoders. Uh, could be optical encoder or a, a magnet encoder. Um, in most of the cases, they are optical encoder for high accuracy, either relative or absolute. Anyway, we have huge amount of data coming with high rate, and um, the, that's why we use this type of a special um, input devices. So these input devices are capable of uh, accepting, reading, uh, and translating the data for the PLC. The thumb wheel module allows the use of thumb wheel switches for feeding information to the PLC to be used in the control program. So again, it's another type of special input, yes? So this is special input and it needs a special module. Uh, it's a town wheel, the, the digital town wheel. Uh, and uh, we could assign this number and send it to a PLC program. This number could be a preset value for, let's say that the water tank uh, and uh, the operator could change that. So again, this type of uh, input devices needs a, a special module. Another module is a special module is TTL module allows the transmitting and receiving of TTL or transistor transistor logic signals. This module allows devices that produce TTL level signal to communicate with the PLC's processor. Okay, so it goes beyond the topic of this course, um, but again, it's a, a, a common and useful type of uh, special devices uh, for accepting uh, TTL signals. An encoder counter module allows the user through the signal from the encoder on a real-time basis and stores this information so it can be read later by the processor. The basic or ASCII modules. One user written basic and C programs. So typical application include interfaces to barcode readers, robot uh, printers, and displays. So here we have again another special module that reads uh, basic or ASCII uh, uh, information. And that one is written by basic or C program. So here we have a module, <coughs> uh, we have a robot, uh, industrial robot. We want to interface that robot with our PLC. 
So uh, the, the robot has its own program, and that program should talk with the PLC through these specific modules. The stepper motor module provides pulse trains to a stepper motor translator, which enables control of a stepper motor. Okay, so again, use specific module for the steppers, yes. The commands of the PLC are determined by the control program in the PLC. The BCD output module, or binary coded decimal output module, enables a PLC to operate devices that require BCD coded signals, such as seven segment displays. Okay, so here we have seven segment display to uh, change the setting of these displays. We need a specific module. Uh, we need that uh, PCD output module. The proportional integral derivative PID module is used in process control applications that incorporate PID algorithm. Again, a specific type of output module uh, or PID modules. This arrangement prevents the CPU from being burdened with complex calculation. So we have complex calculation here. Uh, here, let's say this is a PID controller. This is our control diagram. We have a set point. We have PID controller. We have our process or plant here and the feedback loop. Yes, this is the feedback loop. Okay, so in this case, we have a more advanced one, which is the PID self-tuner or adaptive one. Just ignore this part for now. But the PID controller itself consists of proportional integral derivative, so some calculation plus accepting feedback, and to again, to lift the burden from the CPU. We use this specific type of um, modules. Motion and position control modules are used in applications involving accurate high-speed machining and packaging operation. Okay, so very similar to PID modules, yes, but specifically designed for motion or position control. Uh, and that accept, of course, uh, the, the encoder data, and we have a server drive. So again, a very specific type of PLC module uh, designed specifically for motion or position control, intelligent position and motion control modules, permit PLCs to control a stepper and servo motors. And another special type of um, output module we have here, HMIs, serial communication modules are used to establish point-to-point -point connection with other intelligent devices for the exchange of data. Communication modules provide for connection to PLC networks. Okay, so this is a basically those serial connection here have and that serial connection could be used uh, to send data to uh, oscilloscope or HMI or any type of uh, output devices that accept serial output or has these type of uh, uh, RSI ports. I.O. specifications. Discrete I.O. module specification. So when we get uh, any type of I.O. module, um, it comes with a spec sheet, and that list or, or the specification. And we want to understand or get familiar ourselves with the most important ones. The first one is nominal input voltage. It specifies the magnitude, for example, 5, 24, 
30 volt and type AC or DC of user supply voltage that a module is designed to accept. Input threshold voltage specifies the minimum on state voltage at which logic one is recognized and the maximum off stage voltage at which logic zero is recognized. Yes. So low voltage, high voltage, for example, in Arduinos, you've seen that. And uh, that that's a range or threshold to translate the input voltage to uh, digital states on or off. Nominal current per input specifies the minimum input current that the discrete input devices must be capable of driving to operate the input circuit. So how much current basically it draws. Ambient temperature rating specifies what the maximum temperature of the air surrounding the I.O. module should be for best operating condition. Input on off delay response time specifies the maximum time duration required by an input module circuitry to recognize that the field device has switched on or switched off. Okay, so that input device should be, let's say, on for a certain period of time. Always there is a relay. What is that response time? of the module and the output voltage this ac or dc value specifies the magnitude by 115 230 volt and type ac dc of user supply voltage at which the discrete output module is designed to operate output current specifies the maximum current that the signal output and the module as a whole can safely carry under load in rush current specifies the maximum in rush current and duration, for example, 20 ampere for 0.1 second, for which an output circuit can exceed its maximum continuous current rate. So it's basically a pulsing current, yes? And we want to know uh, how big that current could be what is that specification for in, in rush current? Short circuit protection specifies whether the particular output module's design has individual protection for each circuit or if fuse protection is provided for groups, four or eight of outputs. Leakage current, this value specifies the amount of current still conducting through an output circuit even after the output has been turned off. So again, uh, the delay between turning off the output and uh, the current still circulating in the circuit or remains in the circuit. Electrical isolation, the specification for electrical isolation typically a 1500 or 2500 volts AC rates the module's capacity for sustaining an excessive voltage at its input or output terminal. Okay, so this is a basically, uh, we are talking about the isolation in the input and output module that we already uh, explained that connects the power section to the digital section. And the points per module, this specification defines the number of field input output uh, devices that can be connected to a single module. Uh, and a backplane current draw, this value indicates the amount of current the module requires from the backplane. The sum of the backplane current drawn for all modules in the chassis is used to select the appropriate chassis power supply rating. So all these modules here are drawing current and the summation of them specifies the uh, current rating of the power supply. 
channels per module. Okay, so uh, we use point for digital input output and channels for analog input output. Whereas individual circuits on discrete or digital I.O. modules are specified as points per module, circuits on analog I.O. modules are specified as channels per module. Okay, so how many channels we have that on module. Input current voltage ranges. These are the voltage or current signal ranges that an analog input module is designed to accept. So we already talked about these ranges in previous slides on analog I.O. module section. An output current voltage range, same definition for the output. This specification defines the current or voltage signal ranges that the particular analog output module is designed to output under program control. Input protection. Analog input circuits are usually protected against accidentally connecting a voltage that exceeds a specified input voltage range. And resolution, so we, we had this definition in previous slides in more detail. The resolution specifies how accurately an analog value can be represented digitally. This will determine the smallest measurable unit of current or voltage change that can be detected. An input impedance and capacitance, very important uh, specification. For analog IOs, these values must be matched to the external device connected to the module. Typical ratings are in uh, mega O or picofarad range. So the impedance of the module should match with the device. That's very important. Common mode rejection, it's another uh, uh, basically a specification for analog I.O. module. Noise is generally caused by electromagnetic interface, radio frequency interface, and ground loops. Noise that is picked up equally in parallel wires is rejected by the difference because the difference is zero. Twisted pair wires are used to ensure that this type of noise is equal on both wires. So that's why we use these twisted pair wires to get uh, basically uh, to get the noise on uh, both of these wires and re reject or eliminate the noise and detecting noise. The central processing unit or CPU section. The central processing unit CPU is built into fixed PLC while module type types typically use a plug-in module. Okay, so again, the CPU module is all in, in module uh, PLCs could be plugged in to the rack. CPU controller and processor are all terms used by different manufacturers to denote the same module that performs basically the same functions. So all of them are same names for the same uh, module. A processor module can be divided into two sections, the CPU section and the memory section. Okay, so here we have the CPU and the memory and this is the processor module. The CPU executes the program. Okay, so this one executes the program CPU here and the memory stores the program along with other retrievable data. Okay, so we might have some preset value or other, other basically uh, uh, values plus the program and that's inside the memory of CPU. The PLC power supply provides the necessary power to the processor and the I.O. module plug into the backplane 
of the rack. So again, we have the power supply that supplies power uh, of uh, CPU. The power supply converts the AC input voltage into the usable DC voltage required by the CPU, memory, and I.O. electronic circuitry. The CPU contains the similar type of microprocessor found in a personal computer. A PLC microprocessor is designed to facilitate industrial control rather than provide general purpose computing. Okay, so it's designed more specific. So that's why it has a higher speed for a PLC purposes. Uh, and processes. The CPU of a PLC system may contain more than one process. Fault tolerant PLC systems support dual processors for critical processes. These systems allow the user to configure the system with redundant two processors, which allows transfer of control to the second processor in the event of processor fault. Okay, so to have more reliability, you have, let's say, two processors here, one is redundant, is sitting there for the engine cases, for the special cases. If the first one is faulty or becomes faulty, uh, then the processor quickly switches to the second. Associated with the processor unit will be a number of status LED indicator to provide system diagnostic information to the operator. So same as IO module, we have a bunch of uh, LEDs that shows status of inputs and outputs. We have also some status LEDs. Those LEDs are used to show if the LED is on run or stop or pause or if there is a fault, it's faulty, yes, so it's used for diagnostic by the operator to see the status of the processor and PLC. Memory design. Memory is the element that stores information, programs, and data in PLC. The complexity of the program determines the amount of memory required. Yeah, so here, for example, the con uh, micro uh, logic 1000 controller, uh, we need the 1K memory and accepts up to 20 and 14 input and outputs. Then um, here on this one, this type of controller, they have higher memory, accepts more input output, and we have higher memory on this one. And again, accepting more input output plus it accepts a more complex program. Memory location refers to an address in the CPU's memory where a binary word can be stored. Each binary piece of data is a bit and eight bits make a one byte. So here we have two bytes that makes up a word and we have 16 Bits. The program stored in the memory as ones and zeros, which are typically assembled in the form of 16-bit words. Sections of memory used to store the status of inputs are called input status files or tables. So here we have this uh, input image table. We have two input, one is one, the other one is zero and you could locate those ones and zeros in the input image table. The same also valid for the output status file and we have the image table for the outputs um, and uh, the output module reads from the memory and updates output. Memory types. Memory types can be placed into two general categories, volatile and non-volatile. Non-volatile memory has the ability to retain stored information when power is removed accidentally or intentionally. 
volatile memory will lose its stored information if all operating power is lost or removed. PLCs have programmable memory that allows users to develop and modify control programs. This memory is made non-volatile so that if power is lost, the PLC holds its programming. Non-volatile read-only memory or ROM stores programs and data that cannot be changed after the memory chip has been manufactured. Okay, so ROM memories are non-volatile, so the data cannot be altered or changed later. ROM is used by the PLC for the operating system and control, controls the, the system software that the user uses to program the PLC. So operating system is usually a written on these type of memory so it cannot be changed later. Random access memory or RAM is designed so that information can be written into or read from the memory. PLCs use RAM as a temporary storage area of data that may need to be quickly changed. RAM is volatile, so battery backup is required for it to avoid losing data in the event of a power loss. So RAMs are volatile and ROM or ROM uh, memories are non-volatile. Erasable programmable read-only memory or EPROM provides some level of security against unauthorized or unwanted changes in a program. EP-ROMs are designed so that data stored in them can be read, but not easily altered without special equipment. Okay, so um, the difference between EP-ROMs and ROMs is that ROMs cannot be uh, changed after they are manufactured, but uh, these type of memories um, we have uh, some level of security, but still we could change them. So for this case, for example, we have these ultraviolet or UV uh, EPROM uh, memory can only be erased with an ultraviolet light. So we need the special light to delete the data. So th these type of memories are non-volatile. Electrically erasable programmable read-only memory or EEP-ROM is a non-volatile memory that offers the same programming flexibility as does RAM. The EEP-ROM can be electrically overwritten with new data instead of being erased with ultraviolet light. So, so because the EEP ROM is non-volatile memory, it does not require ba battery backup. So these are non-volatile but could be act as a RAM and RAM is a volatile, so they have some level of security to keep our data, and uh, the data could be erased um, electrically, so we don't need those, let's say, ultraviolet or special equipment to delete the data. Flash EEP ROMs are similar to EEP ROMs, in that they can only be used for backup storage. Flash memory is extremely fast at saving and retrieving files. Flash memory is also sometimes built into the processor module where it automatically backs up parts of RAM.
Okay, so so flash memory is um, use, usually used uh, also for operating system, uh, and uh, they are extremely fast. Plus, they are non-volatile. Programming terminal devices. A programming terminal device is needed to enter, modify, and troubleshoot the PLC program. The handheld proprietary programming terminal has a connecting tech cable so that it can be plugged into a PLC's programming port. So this is the handheld device and we could program or PLC or change the program. Handheld programmers are compact and inexpensive but have limited display cap capabilities. So the display is small and um, we cannot go over all the program uh, and look at the to basically uh, up and down the programs and decide how we could uh, improve or enhance it. Uh, instead, it's good for a quick changes in, uh, in the PLC uh, program. The most popular method of PLC programming is to use a personal computer in conjunction with the manufacturer's programming software. So uh, we use laptop and the monitor to change the program and we need special software to do so. Recording and retrieving data. The programming in the PLC is entered directly from the keyboard or downloaded from the computer hard drive or thumb drive. Some CPUs support the use of memory cartridge that provides portable EEP ROM storage for the user program. The cartridge can be used to copy a program from one PLC to another similar type PLC. Human Machine Interface or HMIs a human machine interface HMI can be connected to communicate with the PLC to replace push buttons, selector switches, pilot lights, thumb wheels, and other operator control panel devices. So basically, they are sort of industrial monitors, uh, but uh, they they are uh, touch sensitive and uh, we could, uh, let's say, monitor the program at the same time and the data, plus we could apply some changes, push buttons and enter data uh, to the program and send it to PLC. Human machine interfaces allow you to view the operation in real time. So this is the operation you, should, you could see. We have the visualization and we could see uh, what's going on online and real time uh, inside the process. You can configure display screens to replace the hardwired push buttons and pilot lights with realistic looking icons or could allow the operator to change timer and counter presets or show alarms complete with time of occurrence.